as we gather together and prepare ourselves to listen to chapter 6 out of The Way Back to Mayberry by Joey Fan. Um, as I get ready to share this, uh, this episode of Andy Griffith is one of my favorites, uh, Opie and the Spoiled Kid, uh, the one about Arnold Winkler and the bicycle. I'm sure as I read through this, you will remember it. Uh, but the title of the chapter from chapter 6 is Family Values, and as I said, the episode is Opie and the Spoiled Kid. And the scripture for today comes from Ephesians chapter 6, verses 1 through 4. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment with a promise that it may go well with you and that you may enjoy long life on the earth. Fathers, do not exasperate your children. Instead, bring them up in the training and instruction of the Lord. In the episode, Opie and the Spoiled Kid, Opie meets a new kid in town named Arnold Winkler. Opie soon finds out that Arnold is wise to the ways of the world and pretty much has life figured out. After all, Arnold has been around. He used to live in Raleigh. Arnold can't believe all the chores Opie has to do just to receive a 25-cent allowance. Arnold tells Opie that his father sure saw him coming because kids nowadays should get at least 75 cents for their allowance and without working for it. In fact, Arnold shows Opie his $70 bike he received from his dad just because, in Arnold's words, his dad owed it to him. Opie is now confused. Arnold says that Opie shouldn't have to work for his allowance, but Opie has always worked for his allowance. He decides to ask his paw if the rules have really changed. What follows is one of the more memorable scenes of the show. At the courthouse... Opie has an open and honest discussion with Andy about the rules for kids and parents. Opie tries to explain that all the kids are getting 75 cents for allowance these days, and they don't have to work for it. Andy calmly explains that there aren't any set rules for parents and kids, and that each parent has the responsibility for determining how to raise his or her own child. Andy continues with how important it is to learn the responsibility of working for a reward. Andy asks Opie if he doesn't feel good after a hard day's work. And Opie replies, Yeah, good and tired. A defeated Opie begins to realize that he will not get an allowance raise, and he will have to continue to work for the 25 cents that he currently earns. After the father and son chat, Arnold tells Opie that he isn't trying hard enough. He needs to fight for his rights by talking back and throwing tantrums. Opie decides to give these new techniques a try. Opie returns to the courthouse to attempt another allowance negotiation. First, Opie tries to hold his breath, but Andy just compliments him on doing a good lung exercise. Next, Opie says that he's crying and can't stop, but again, Andy seems unconcerned. As a final resort, Opie falls to the floor, kicking and screaming. Andy asks Opie what he is doing, and when Opie replies that he is throwing a tantrum, Andy tells him not to get his clothes dirty. This is not the reaction a dejected Opie had hoped to produce. Meanwhile, Arnold continues to show his disrespect for any kind of authority by riding his bicycle on the sidewalk, even after Barney gives him a warning. Finally, Arnold flaunts the law one too many times, and Andy confiscates the bike. Arnold is furious and screams at Andy that he is going to go tell his dad. Andy tells Arnold to do just that and to bring his dad by the courthouse. What follows is a scene that shows Arnold's true colors. Arnold wants his bike back, and it doesn't matter what it takes to get it. Arnold even offers his dad to be put in jail if that will get his bike back. At this point, 
Arnold's dad realizes what a spoiled and disrespectful kid he has raised. At Andy's suggestion, he takes Arnold out back to an old-fashioned woodshed where he gives Arnold a much-needed attitude adjustment. This scene is also a powerful lesson for Opie. He sees very clearly the results of Arnold's disrespect for his own father. After Arnold's final tirade, just the look on Opie's face speaks volumes. Forget the nice bike and the big allowance. Opie doesn't want to be like Arnold. Opie now understands that Andy was just trying to do what was best for him. He begins to see the value of Andy's guidance. Opie later apologizes by asking Andy if he happens to need anyone to do some chores around the house. Andy forgives his son and compliments Opie on having the courage to admit his fault. Andy even offers to raise Opie's allowance from 25 to 27 cents. When asked what he will do with the extra money, Opie replies that he will buy a bell. Andy wonders what his son would want with a bell. Opie responds that someday he will have enough money saved up to put a bike under it. It looks like Andy's guidance and instruction are already starting to pay off. On Saturday mornings at our local church, we perform an outreach program to help those in our community who are less fortunate. We provide food, clothing, and other household items for people who might be down on their luck or having a hard time making ends meet for one reason or another. The people show up at the church and we spend a few minutes with them just to find out what's going on in their lives and to better learn how we might be able to help. It is a very sobering and rewarding experience. These people make you realize how blessed you are and how insignificant your problems seem compared to theirs. It is also a blessing to see some of these people rise from the ashes to make a better life for themselves. Though I don't always look forward to going to church on Saturday mornings to do this work, at the end of the day, I'm always glad I went. One particular Saturday, a young mother and her son came in. I sat down with her and I could tell by looking into her eyes that she was struggling. She told me that her husband worked in construction and had recently been injured. Apparently the injury was serious enough that he hadn't been able to work for several days. He didn't receive workman's compensation, so the family's income had stopped. Although she usually stayed home with her young son, she was in the process of looking for a job. Her son, Jacob, was probably about two years old. He was old enough to walk, but he wasn't talking much yet. He was an adorable little boy with haunting blue eyes. He was very shy and clung to his mama when I asked him his name. After a few minutes, he warmed up a little bit and began to feel more at home. Being mischievous, as most little boys are, he began, began to wander around the room. His mother, being conscious of her son, reminded him that they had talked about being good before coming in. That reminded me of many occasions when I was a little boy and my mom would have to talk about being good before we went into a department store or restaurant. Unfortunately, in my case, the conversation was soon forgotten. Jacob, however, was obviously a well-behaved little boy and responded to his mother's words by having a seat next to her. Jacob's mother and I continued to talk for a little while longer. When we talked to each person, we offered to have a prayer with them. Usually we ask if there is anything specific the person would like us to pray for. At first I was uncomfortable praying with people I had just met, but the more I did it, the more I realized how appreciative people are for this simple act. I offered to pray for Jacob and his mom, and she said that would be okay. Then she spoke to Jacob and said, Do you remember how to pray? Do, re do you remember Grandma praying with you and teaching you how? Jacob responded by bowing his head, and he sat perfectly still while I prayed for him and his family. After we were through talking, 
I help Jacob's mom load the groceries and clothes into their small truck. And as they were driving away, I began to think about what she had said. I wondered why Jacob hadn't learned to pray from his own mother and father. Did they leave that important training solely up to the grandmother? I wasn't blaming his parents because there was no way I could know all the struggles they were going through. In fact, all I could see in the mother's eyes was a lot of sadness. But somewhere the responsibility of instilling a basic value to her son had been lost. It seems that this generation has lost sight of the responsibility to instill values into its children. We are led to believe that it is the church's responsibility, or the schools, or the governments, or the grandparents. But what is so important in our lives that would keep us from teaching our children the values that will last a lifetime? The values that define who we are and what we are about. Have we become so distracted that we have lost sight of that very core responsibility? I'm sure the daily schedule of a small town sheriff would pale in comparison to our busy schedules today. But there are some things to notice from Andy's example. He was available. Opie could go to his father any time he wanted, and Andy was never too busy to talk. He was understanding no matter what the subject. Andy would give Opie a chance to explain himself, and he would listen. He was firm in what was right. Even though Opie was tempted to take the easy way out, Andy gently but firmly guided him in the right direction. Andy knew that this training at an early age would pay off later in life. Andy put it well when he said, If we don't teach children to live in society today, what's going to happen when they grow up? Hope all is well is with you, and you are staying well and staying safe. Until next time, this is Pastor Matt from Good Shepherd.